Hello, my name is David Coletta, and I'm the senior leader at Mission Community Church. Before you begin watching the Sermon of the Week, allow me to pray that you might encounter God right there where you are. Father, I ask that your spirit will be present right where people are watching this video. May they be receptive to the voice of your spirit as they watch in Jesus' name, amen. From all of us at MCC, may God bless you as you watch this week's message. Boy, the Lord is good, amen. Say the Lord is good. The Lord is so good to us. We love to worship. We love to be in your presence, oh God. We love knowing you intimately, Lord God. I wanted to just tell everybody, today is a different kind of service in that if you're a guest here or if you haven't been here long, we have what we call Selah services. Selah means to stop and think or rest. And if you read through the Psalms, there'll be a text uh, about the greatness of God, the glory of God. Psalm 66 says, and then it says, Selah. Don't just keep reading. Don't just keep going. Just stop. Think for a minute. So every so often we like to have a Selah service that's not our traditional model. It's not what we do every Sunday. It's a, it's a break. It's a stop. It's a rest. It's a moment to commune with God through communion, commune with God through worship. And it's a moment when you feel like the Lord has really put something on your heart to share. You can come grab the mic and share. Not just something God showed you in devotion last week, but if there's something on your heart, a prophetic word, a word of knowledge, or, or something God's really provoking you to share. I don't want to intimidate you not to come up, but I don't want you just to come up because you had something God showed you a month ago. It's what is the Spirit saying to you now? And so Jim and I will be up here in the front. You can come up to us and just share what's going on. And then we'll give you the mic and you can share. You don't have to come up here. You could just stand right there on the floor. Selah. Can you just say it? Selah. Stop. Stop. Stop the hustle and bustle. Stop the worrying. Stop the stress. Just stop and just let God fill your spirit today.
I just want to share that some of us need to understand the Lord as our our fire by night, our north star. And you know when when you see a constellation pictured in a textbook or in some way, they've got the stars in there, but there's also the lines connecting the stars. Um, I don't know about you, but I look up in the sky and I don't see a goat. It's, I have to have that, the dots connected for me. I just pray that as you encounter the Lord this morning in this time, that you will know him as your North Star. And many of us do, but he's asking you to connect some dots with the various situations and environments and relationships in your life. Connect the dots from his North Star guidance into those areas, those realms, those spheres that he so wants to be a part of. Connect the dots. And maybe those lines look like trust. Maybe they look like repentance. Maybe they look like just laying down the control and allowing his constellation to be part of his North Star guidance. I don't know a whole lot about stars and constellations like Lola was talking about, but it's my understanding that the North Star is part of the Big Dipper. And when you uh, connect the dots, there's a Big Dipper. And the neat thing about the Big Dipper is it's always pouring out. Isn't that something? Not just some days, holidays, special days. The, the Big Dipper is always there to, to represent that God is pouring out his blessings, pouring out his love, pouring out his provision. Isn't that an amazing thing? James, James wants to share something that kind of fits into that. Several things have happened. So God gave me a word as it relates to scripture and then something personally that happened. I wasn't seeking this. And all of a sudden, resources came into my house that weren't a one-time resource. This is a continuous resource. I didn't ask for it. I didn't seek it. All of a sudden, it's like God just said, here. And shoved. so it's a renewed resource financially. And God then began to show me a picture of what's going on in scripture and I think it relates to the body of Christ if you recall the prophet asked of the widow make me a cake and that was all they had they were going to go in she and her son were going to die and we're going to make a cake and then we're going to die and God said make me a cake first and this was in a time of famine much as what we're in right now resources are drying up additional financial pressure is happening and then he said go and get an oil and he said go and get the resources and God provided the food for not just a day it was a renewed thing until the famine was over and I hear the Lord saying he's going to do the very same thing for his people who we'll seek him so if you've got financial things, wait, resources are coming, not just provision. God would say, I don't simply provide only for my children. Do you dote on your own children? How much more do I dote on mine? How much more do I give? So I see a direct corollary that I've experienced, but also what's in scripture especially because finances are drying up for some people but god hasn't forgotten his children Feel the wind of your spirit, now the heartbeat of 
say you are not silent But you are not quiet We say that you are making a way where there is no way The streams of the desert You still make water come from the rocks But you still pop the seas before us I didn't come in here with an umbrella today. I just saw it laying around and I picked it up because I felt like God was telling us we're praying for rain. But sometimes we take undercover. I'm sorry whoever uh, this umbrella belongs to. I just, I had to. But it just felt like God is willing to pour out the blessing, but I feel like sometimes we're so timid or we, we, we don't believe that God will, will bless us with the blessings, like it's for someone else, not us. So we take over, we take over when God just wants to like pour it out. And God is saying, Let it, I want to reign over you, do not hide. I want to bless you in overflow and in abundance. Receive the rain. Father, we receive it tonight, God. Today, let it rain over our lives, over our family, over everything, Jesus. Holy Spirit, electrify and come in and destroy religion, as Caroline was singing earlier. Break down religion, break down pride. Whatever we're comfortable in, Lord God, let us just throw it away. Throw it away to the side. Let that be something of the past and teach us to, to worship you freely, to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, we give you glory, God. We've been praying this the Lord's giving me a picture so I feel like I had to share it um, as we've been asking Lord will let it rain open the floodgates of heaven this is what I see there is a land that is destroyed by war there's smoke around there's rubble everywhere it's a really gloomy place of destruction and a sweeping wind came across the land and it blew away the sand and all of the ashes and then there was a torrential downpour that swept across the land. It was heavy and what would feel disillusioning to be standing in or driving. And suddenly the rain started to lighten and there was a lingering fragrance of a sweet, refreshing scent that cloaked the area. It was the aroma of the throne room. And then there were people standing there. And as the rain fell on them, 
it covered them in what would be the oil of the Holy Spirit, and they were drenched. And as the oil dripped into the volcanic ground, there was a pearl that appeared out of the ashes. And it started to light up like it was radiantly illuminated. And it started to shake. And then the pearl started to melt. And as it melted, it erupted almost in a catalytic way, like a lava would erupt from a volcano. And it poured out over the land and it flooded everything people were standing in. So instead of water, now it was this like illuminating oil, um, metallic color. And from there, it, it illuminated the space and pushed away all of the darkness that was coming around. And then the picture zoomed out as if a drone was flying and it expanded and then I saw the state of North Carolina and it expanded beyond that into what was the U.S. and then the whole world in a white washed over the land in a cosmic radiance that reflected the radiance of God just as Jesus transfigured Mormon Moses saw the presence of the Lord. And then I heard Habakkuk 2.14 said, For the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the water covers the sea. So thank you, Lord. Let it rain. Let it start here. Let it start here in this moment with us, God. We stand surrendered with open hands. Open hearts, God. Have your way. Let it rain. Thank you, Lord, for revival. Thank you, Lord, for transformation. Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Thank you.
I've been so blessed this morning to hear every person that shared. It just seemed like a, all the sort of waterfalls of coming out of the belly of people to minister to everyone. And it just seemed like every single thing that was said was significant from the time of communion and, and the, um, speaking out of Isaiah um, about the Lord being pierced. And it just seemed so beautiful to me. And I just felt that the Lord wanted to say to each person today, I really felt the Lord wanted to say to each one of you that he was saying thank you to, to you. That he was saying thank you for being faithful. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing in the gap. I just had a picture of myself and I was down, sort of crouched down, like in between, like almost like the crack in the earth. I was there was like a crack in the earth and I was crouched down and I was praying and there was so much pressure from both sides of the earth like were pressing in on me, but I was crouched down and I was interceding and I was praying. And I, I felt that the Lord said that the earth quaked. And so I remembered from 2 Samuel, it says, I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I have been saved from my enemies. The waves of death swirled around me and the torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The courts of the great coiled around me and the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I called out to my God and from, from his temple, he heard my voice and my cry came up into his ears and the earth trembled and quaked and the foundations of the heavens shook and they trembled because he was angry. And what I'm saying to you is in our faithfulness, even in this church, to lift up our worship, to lift up that aroma to Jesus, that I believe that that aroma is going up into heavens. And so for me, one of my real issues is just culture. Like I look at our culture and I'm just so mourning and grieving and I've been praying for decades and decades for revival. I've been praying for decades and, and it just seems like it's darker and darker. But what I felt like the Lord is, giving us a kiss this morning. And he's saying, thank you for being faithful. Thank you for standing in the gap. Thank you for being strong. And that he is saying that he is going to come down and he is going to crack open. And I believe that and I declare today that because of the worship of the faithful saints, that that anointing is going up and that sweet aroma is going up. And God, you're gonna crack open the earth. You're gonna crack open these dark places. And Father, so we believe that the earth trembled and quaked. The foundations of the heavens shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and he came down. And dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherub and he flew and he soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his canopy around him. Out of the brightness of the presence, bolts of lightning blazed forth. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy. With great bolts of lightning, he routed them. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are thundering from heaven. That your voice is resounding in Jesus' name. That God, the things that look impossible to us are possible with you. And Father, because of your faithful saints who stand in the gap, who stand under the pressure, who don't give up, God, who persist, that God, you are going to change our world. Lord, we just believe that the valleys of the sea will be exposed, the foundations of the earth laid bare at the rebuke of the Lord. And so, Father, we thank you that you rebuke darkness, that you rebuke your enemies. And Father, we thank you that we are going to see this awakening and revival like what Madison was talking about, that anointing that comes down and flows down. And so, Father, we thank you for all the miracles. I thank you today for the miracles that you are doing in culture. I thank you that you're answering the prayers of your church. Father, we thank you that we're going to see renewal and revival and awakening because of your faithfulness, because of your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, guys. I just wanted to uh, share something that God put on my heart. Uh, a, a perspective as you're here in this room is just that you are standing before the throne of God and you are in his presence and everybody around you right now is in a refuge and in, in salvation and this is a place where you can just go and you can feel his presence and he is filling this place and he's filling every single one of your hearts 
And uh, God prompts me in these times to ask him questions, every question, any question. And uh, because he says, don't be afraid to ask me these things. Don't be afraid to um, just to, to pry and dig deep into my heart because I want you to know a few things. And he said, I want you to know my love. He said, I want you to know my call, my heart, my actions, how I look, how I speak and sound, how I move, and what I think of you. One question that I've been asking a lot recently is, how can I serve you right now, Father? Thank you for serving us. Thank you for washing our feet. Thank you for cleansing our sins with your blood. But how can we worship you right now? How can we serve you? And he said, this is how you do it right here. You surrender all your inhibitions, all your feelings, all your fears and your worries. You let them go. You give them to me. You put them in my hands and you fall and you rest in me and in my presence and in my throne room. And I just wanted to share that because I think right now in this place, we need to just focus on him and ask him any questions that you might just have, you know, really burning in your heart and in your mind. Um, and, and just be ready for an answer because he's going to provide an answer. He's going to provide a way. He's going to provide the light to guide you into and out of what you're in and into the next glory that he has set up for you. I'm going to be fast. I have a testimony to share. But Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you. God is listening and God wants to tell you something. My husband and I were invited by an acquaintance to a Kingdom Business Association meeting. And uh, it was a conference. And we went to the conference all day Friday, all day Saturday. But Friday night, George had some issues with the tooth. And we had to leave right at the end of the conference. And what we didn't know at that time was um, the pastor who had been teaching. And I don't know anyone in this organization no one knew me no natural knowledge um, but I had asked God in prayer just a week prior two very specific questions very specific questions and this man stood up and said that a friend of his had told him I need I think you need to study Judges 5 and then he said you know that's about Deborah see what my name is I'm working in the kids this day and he said, I have a word for a Deborah or a Debbie. Now, there's a lot of Debbies in the world. And this was a conference of hundreds of people, maybe 300 plus. And I was the only Debbie there. Now, I wasn't in the room when this was delivered, but I've gotten it since then because the next day when I met people, they said, oh, you're the Debbie. You're the Debbie he was talking about. So this is what he delivered to me in answer to my specific questions that I asked God through a man who didn't know me. He said my name six times. Someone said, it, could it be a spiritual Deborah? He said, no, this person is named Deborah. And he said, we break the power of arthritic pain over your joints, tendons, and ligaments. God is giving you a renewing of hope. You have a renewing of health. You have a renewing of faith. And I sense that there was a very traumatic event 25 years ago in your life that turned and set the course for your life. I am seeing a traumatic event that caused um, your life has in the past had times of great despair, but God is giving you a renewing of hope and a renewing of faith and a renewing of health. And then he slowed down and he says, and also, as some of you know, we have a, my husband and I, he's a bass player, have a big faith project going on right now and it involves one of our children. Any of you ever been a prodigal? I know some of you have prodigals. And he said, and also, I see a younger man directly connected to you and the Lord is moving on his heart and he will come to the Lord within the next year. 
So let me tell you, God is listening and he will answer your questions. So ask him. And he is no respecter of persons. What he has done for me, he will do for each and every one of you. You can get this. He says it three times. I'm no respecter of persons. Acts 10, 34, Romans 2, 11, and Ephesians 6, 9. Check it out. His word is true. Thank you. So I was sitting down trying to mind my business. And I saw as we were singing, let the, you know, let it rain, pour yourself out. You know, we want more of you, God. I saw a, a class and it was like a third full and it was rest of it empty. And I see that he was like, this is many. They want to fill, they want me to fill them, but they want to hold on to what was left. And that's like identity, old stuff, old habits, old belief, old traditions, limitations. And he's like, I want to take you higher. I want to fill myself with you. And the thing is that he can't fill, like he said, new wine skin. He can't put the new in the old. I, we're going to pray that old habits, old identity, they die because there's a newness that God's trying to give us. You know, there's a fresh anointing, new oil, new wine, a new identity, new purpose. So as we, and he hears us, like they said, he hears us. So we can't call him to do something and just say, no, not that, not that. So God, I pray that we surrender all to you, God, that we get, get all the limitations be broken. All the limitations, all the all the religion, everything that's hindrance, Lord God, be broken now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your fire, of your anointing, your revival of your Holy Spirit to fill us and encounter us, God. As we say, let it rain. Do it in us, God. Deepen us, Father. It's amazing, isn't it? I just love these services because God is speaking through all these different people that didn't even know what was going to happen. I didn't know what the songs were going to be, but before the service, in our pre-service prayer, I saw the Lord with a, a little eyedropper dropping out little drops of blessing. And I said, oh God, that's not enough. That's not enough. We don't need little drops. And I thought of that old song, mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers, we plead. If you're pleading for showers today, I, I encourage you to come on up and just say, Lord, you are great. You are wonderful. But Lord, we don't want a little eyedropper. We don't want little drops. We want a flood. We want the floodgates. We want the rain. So thank you, Father.
your assignment for this week and any week is John chapter 2, verse 5. Whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. <laughs> we need to hear from him, just like we have this morning. Hear from him and do what he says. You know, they asked David Youngie Cho how he built the largest church in the whole world, like 750,000 people. He said, I pray and I obey. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's a pretty good formula, isn't it? Pray and obey. Let it be. Thank you, Father, for what you've done this today, Lord. Uh, Father, we thank you, God. You have done great things. You are a great God. And we thank you, Father, what you're doing in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Amen. Hey, thank you for watching the Sermon of the Week. We pray that you were blessed by it and you felt prompted to act upon what the Spirit of God was saying to you. If you live in the Charlotte area, we would love for you to come and worship with us at one of our weekend gatherings. That way you can find out more about our church family and what we value most. We encourage you also to give to our ministry so that we might continue spreading the gospel of Jesus to our city and throughout the world. To do so, you simply go to missioncommunity.cc, click on the give button, and the rest is simple. Lastly, I would encourage you to check out the remaining content on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe that way you will receive all of the reminders for fresh content that we put out. Have a wonderful rest of your day. May God bless you and thank you again for watching this week's message.